The single most powerful ad that Donald Trump ran was Kamala's for they, them, I'm for you. It was a hell of a message. Trump nailed it. The greatest political comeback of all time is in Donald Trump's favor now. What a night. What an experience. We are dominating in the culture, sports, media landscape right now because we're right. Because we speak to the vast majority of people across the political spectrum who are just normal. Just normal guys and gals out there who think sports is great, but it should be a meritocracy. That you're defined by more than what your race is. That you're defined by more than what your gender is. That you're defined by more than what your sexuality is. That you're an individual. Welcome in to Outkick the Show. This may be the most excited I have been for any Outkick the Show ever. I'm still walking on air. I've slept only a couple of hours. Uh, Awesome time last night at Kid Rock's on Broadway, Honky Tonk. We did some live reaction shows there. I was on Fox Nation for over four hours live. I'm presuming that's still up somewhere. Pete Hegseth, Tommy Lahren, Morgan Ortegas. Uh, Riley Gaines, Robbie Starbucks, so many different awesome discussions. Kid Rock, kind of cool. Um, and I met a lot of you out there last night. Just a fabulous evening. Uh, I'm going to go all into what we learned from the biggest Republican presidential win since 1984, it now looks like, since Ronald Reagan wiped out Walter Mondale. It has been 40 years since we saw a landslide for the Republican Party like we saw last night. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I want to tell you, for over two decades, Tunnel to Towers Foundation's been out there for our fallen and catastrophically injured first responders and military, our Gold Star families as well. If a spouse dies or is catastrophically injured in the line of duty, the foundation will provide the surviving family members with a mortgage-free home. Let me pause here for a sec, tell you about this. A lot of you may have noticed, uh, I've raised a lot of money for these guys, and I'm proud to do it. I was there, uh, one of the speakers, at their most recent uh, event in October up in uh, New York City. Frank Siller does unbelievable work. This is an organization that can desperately use your money, and man, do they take care of people. They've provided over 1,200 uh, mortgage-free homes. Uh, New ones being announced almost daily, and now they promised to eradicate homelessness amongst the veteran population. Learn more about the Foundation's mission, impact, and how you can help support our nation's heroes at visitt2t.org. That's visitt2t.org. Go check it out. Visitt2t.org. It was a bloodbath. Donald Trump smoked Kamala Harris all over the nation. Thank all of you for getting out to vote. Thank you for making me look like a genius. I put it out there. I was looking at the early voting. I was analyzing it. There weren't a lot of people on this island with me. I said Trump was going to win Georgia, North Carolina, Arizona, and Nevada. I was right. I said Trump was going to win Pennsylvania by over 100,000 votes. I was right. Michigan also now been called, Wisconsin called. Trump is going to win all seven so-called battleground states. Not very many people were with me. I also said Donald Trump was going to win the popular vote. Donald Trump is going to win the popular vote. Republicans are going to sweep the Senate. They are massive favorites now to take the House as well and go ahead and have everything lined up. This was an incredibly consequential election. I think what happened is this was a dude revolution. Now, there are a lot of people out there who are women that voted for Trump, but I think when you go in and start to look at the overall voting registry, this was the destruction of identity politics once and for all. It shattered into 300 million pieces. Everybody now is an individual. White, black, Asian, Hispanic men said, no more. This is crazy. The most effective angle that Donald Trump reached out to men, young men in particular, on was women who are having to compete against men, this whole crazy trans agenda, the idea that women are somehow men, uh, uh, that men can become women. It was all bonkers. 
And I give a great and tremendous amount of credit to Riley Gaines, who was swimming at the University of Kentucky when this dude who wants to call himself Leah Thomas decided to strap on a women's bathing suit and went out and won an NCAA championship after swimming for three years as a member of the University of Pennsylvania men's team. He then decided to become a woman and win a women's NCAA championship. This is happening everywhere. We just saw the boxer uh, who won a gold medal biological dude who just went out and kicked the crap out of a bunch of women men said enough the democrat party woke agenda is broken and trump is going to win the popular vote trump won all seven battlegrounds trump is going to end up i believe with 312 electoral votes biggest most consequential victory for a republican i believe when all is said and done since 1984 when Ronald Reagan won re-election 40 years ago. You're already seeing this uh, closing argument. I told you I didn't think it was going to work, that uh, that Trump supporters are garbage, that the women are not intelligent or strong, uh, that Mark Cuban tried to argue that we're all Nazis. It's gone. It went up in smoke. You guys made it happen. I have... And ama- I had an amazing night celebrating it. I'm still walking on air, even though I've only slept a couple of hours. Uh, I got home at 3 o'clock. Uh, I, I had him keep the bar open so we could watch the call. Amazing time with Pete Hegseth, with uh, Tommy Laren, with Morgan Ortegas. We were on for over four hours, like I said, on Fox Nation. And I just feel like I'm walking on air. And let me give some praise here. A lot of people behind the scenes at OutKick. We are dominating in the culture, sports, media landscape right now because we're right, because we speak to the vast majority of people across the political spectrum who are just normal, just normal guys and gals out there who think sports is great, but it should be a meritocracy that you're defined by more than what your race is, that you're defined by more than what your gender is, that you're defined by more than what your sexuality is, that you're an individual, and that you should have full-fledged free expression rights, and that we should have a robust First Amendment, even if that means, and trust me, it happens, my mom is stunned, people say awful things about me online, I'll wear it because the cost of trying to do something to police speech is so much worse than the cure for speech that you don't like, which is more speech. And I did a lot of speaking yesterday. In fact, I did 10 hours of live media yesterday on like 10 different outlets, I think. Uh, But I'm still walking on air. What a win for Donald Trump. The greatest political comeback in American history. That's the reality. To come back and win the popular vote like this, to sweep across the nation, I I grabbed a bunch of data points that I wanted to hit you with. Um, Florida went to Trump by 13 points. I told you it was going to happen, that Trump was going to win Florida by double digits. Most people didn't believe me. Well, it happened. I didn't think this was going to happen, though. Texas went for Trump by 14 points. Guys, New Jersey only voted for Kamala 51 to 47. New Jersey nearly flipped to Trump. New Jersey, uh, New Hampshire, super close. Virginia, super close. If the Trump team, according to Stephen Miller, if the Trump team had had the billion dollars that Kamala had, Stephen Miller says they would have flipped to New Jersey They would have flipped to New York. New York only voted for uh, Kamala by 10 points. That's a 13-point swing in the direction of, uh, of Donald Trump. Every state voted redder in 2024 than they did in 2020 based on everything that I have seen so far. And he's going to win the national popular vote because of gargantuan margins in many parts of the country. Let me give a particular shout out here uh, to North Carolina. I went to Western North Carolina. I'm going to be making a donation. I've just gotten so busy. Uh, We raised a bunch of money. I'm going to double or triple how much we raised uh, at our event 
uh, that we did in East Tennessee. You remember I flew into Western North Carolina. So many people are still suffering there. I'm going to donate and raise money uh, and double or triple whatever the amount was that we raised at our OutKick event uh, that we did in Knoxville in advance of the Florida game, if I remember correctly. I think it was the Florida Gator game uh, that we were up there. Um, But 190,000 vote margin for Trump in North Carolina. 190,000 vote margin. That nearly triples the amount that Trump won North Carolina by in 2020. Even with Hurricane Helene going on, so many people in Western North Carolina who are struggling... Guys, they still don't have uh, reliable water. Schools finally just opened back up. Still, the state of North Carolina showed up and voted big for Trump. You guys, well done, Tar Heels. Phenomenal to see. Um, Iowa. Remember when everybody was running around on Twitter, all the left-wingers, and they were like, Ann Seltzer's the greatest. She's the greatest pollster ever. She had Kamala winning by three. Kamala ended up losing by 13. She was off by 16 in the state of Iowa. It wasn't remotely close. I told you it wasn't going to be remotely close, and I don't get paid to do polls. But I basically nailed it, humbly, got everything right, because you guys all ran through the finish line and showed up. We didn't get our red wave like I wanted in 2022, But we got a red tsunami in 2024 that swept across the entire nation. And Kamala got swept away with it. Again, I believe it was a dude revolution. All seven battleground states won. It was a bloodbath for Kamala Harris. Uh, Senate also flipped to Republicans. We're going to have, it looks like, 53, 54, maybe even 55 Senate Republicans before all is said and done. That is a massive swing. Bernie Marino wins Ohio. Tim Sheehy wins in Montana. My guy Dave McCormick, who I campaigned with at the Ohio State Penn State game, is going to win Pennsylvania. Uh, Captain Sam Brown out in Nevada is in a good shape uh, to potentially win that seat in Nevada. Kerry Lake's race is going to end up, I think, very close because a lot of ballots still have to be counted. And Trump is going to win Arizona comfortably. Kerry Lake may still end up winning. Uh, Michigan is super tight. Uh, There are still a lot of seats out there that are very winnable. um, And it is just amazing. Again, the early voting analysis that was out there, that I was sharing with you, that I was breaking down, we were right. Those numbers mattered. The gambling markets tended to get things right in general. And let me just say this, the gambling markets now have a 98 or 99% chance that we're going to win the House. That's not official yet, but that is the way that all of that is trending. And look, I mean, to me, the question that has to be asked now is how do Democrats respond to this ass kicking? And right now, the answer seems to be by claiming that this happened because everybody's racist and sexist. They don't have any other arguments. Abortion didn't move their audience in a big way, as I told you. Abortion's just not that big of a deal anymore. Individual states can make their decisions on what abortion law should be. I encourage all of you to advocate for whatever you believe the law of abortion should be. But the number of abortions in the United States has actually increased since Roe v. Wade was overturned. So if all you care about is abortion, that's fine. I mean, you can care about whatever political issue you think is the most important. But you should be advocating for abortion um, uh, issues in your state. And I think what happened was that worked in 2022 when there was a great deal of fear about exactly what the impact of Roe v. Wade being overturned was. But I think a lot of women are recognizing, hey, the abortion issue really hasn't changed that much. Now it's just a state issue instead of a federal Supreme Court law issue. Um, and by the way, the reality is are you 486, whatever they call it, the morning after pill is incredibly available. And lots of young women are using that all the time. And so uh, I just I I think this is becoming less and less of an issue. And I said, and I've been saying for months, Trump would win so long as he made this an economy, border, crime, race. It's as easy as EBC. 
That's what I've been saying. He was right on the economy. He was right on the disaster that is the border and illegal immigration. And he was right on violent crime being up too high. Those were the things that moved the needle and got a lot of people to come out and vote for him. And as a result, I think the world is going to change tremendously. This was a huge win for free speech. It's the thing that I care about the most. I've seen so much of what I have said over the years be censored by big tech at Facebook, be censored by YouTube, be censored by Google, be censored by all of these big tech platforms. I think that they are now going to get out of this space. They recognize that the attempt to turn Donald Trump into a Nazi and try to basically isolate anybody who's willing to vote for him has failed and that Trump has established that the mainstream media, Washington Post, New York Times, CBS, NBC, ABC, uh, they're dead, absolutely dead. The impact of sites like OutKick has skyrocketed. Uh, Podcasts like Joe Rogan, continued uh, radio influence with shows like Clay and Buck. There are minimal benefits now from the legacy media uh, powers and their overall ability to influence and uh, control the narrative has collapsed. Nobody trusts them anymore. And I, I think this is a good example of that. Two stories that they tried to turn into major stories down the stretch, claiming that it was going to swing the outcome of the race in a big way. One was they tried to turn a joke about Puerto Rico from the Madison Square Garden uh, situation into a massive, huge issue for Donald Trump. Didn't happen. He won Hispanic men by massive amounts. He won more Puerto Rican support than he ever has before. That was a lie. It's a great example of a story that wasn't really a story that they tried to launder through their media apparatus to make it seem like it mattered a great deal. It didn't happen. I got three for you, actually. Second one, uh, how about the argument that was out there that this was a democracy at stake election? CNN, 50 to 48 The voters who cared about democracy the most, according to a CNN exit poll, voted for Trump. Because trying to put your chief political rival in prison, trying to kill him, trying to bankrupt him, is actually the threat to democracy. And now, strangely even to me, they're already dropping all of the Jack Smith case the day after Trump wins the popular vote. Uh, To me, that uh, that is a really fascinating because these Democrat narratives are just going up in smoke. Liz Cheney was going to make a big difference. Oh, her endorsement was so important. Uh, Not compared to Tulsi Gabbard, not to compare to Elon Musk, not compared to RFK Jr. and so many other traditional Democrats who joined the Trump coalition. So they tried to turn that Puerto Rico story into a thing. And then they tried to say about Liz Cheney, oh, Trump was going to give a shooter at a firing squad. It was a total lie. It was actually the exact opposite of what Trump was saying. Trump argued, as has been argued for generations, that uh, if you have to go fight a war yourself, or if your kids have to go fight the war, that you are much less likely to send soldiers into combat. Yeah, you think? That isn't even remotely controversial of an opinion. In fact, rich man's war, poor man's fight, was a rallying cry against the draft in the North and during the Civil War. So, like, all Trump was doing was arguing the hippie thing that all the hippies were still saying in the 1960s during Vietnam. And uh, it is just staggering to me that we ever ended up in this uh, in this situation. Uh Some big winners, some big losers. How about Mark Cuban? What a tremendous loser he was to go all in for Kamala like he did, to say that Trump wasn't surrounded by smart, intelligent women. That was, I think, the most consequential statement made down the stretch alongside of Joe Biden saying Trump supporters were garbage. I talked about the fact that I saw a lot of Trump supporters on Halloween dressed up in garbage bags, dressed up in their reflective safety vest, uh, looking like garbage men. 
I told you that that was going to be impactful. People try to say, oh, nobody cared. Women were fired up by those Mark Cuban comments. Trump supporters were engaged even more by being called garbage, and they showed up in record numbers at the polls. Mark Cuban, huge friggin' loser. One of the biggest losers out there, alongside of Tim Walls, who I think it's now fair to say is the worst vice president pick in any of our lives. He was a clown. He nearly uh, lost his own state. Uh, Minnesota only went for Kamala by a couple of points. They actually lost support in Minnesota after uh, compared to 2020, even though the governor was on the ballot. Tim Walz's old congressional seat flipped and went to Trump. Walz's career is over. Kamala's career is over. Reports that Kamala is going to concede. I'll probably put that on and watch it on television here in the next half hour or so. Be prepared. What you're going to see soon is a lot of Democrats are going to be arguing that Trump didn't actually win. Uh, Despite the fact they've spent four years saying questioning an election is a direct attack on democracy. Now they are going to question the election just like they did for four years after 2016 when they tried to bring Russia, Russia, Russia for why uh, that ended up being the outcome of the race. If you look at the data, again, some of these uh, data points are uh, still being finalized and there's conflicting exit polls, but it appears Gen X saved America. I'm the youngest member of Gen X. Gen X, I think, is typically defined 1965 to 1979. I was born in 1979. I'm 45 years old. This was the greatest political night of my life. Gen X saved America. Now, a lot of young men also showed up in record numbers voting Trump. There are very good signs out there that there is a growing coalition for sanity in America. And last night, That growing coalition for sanity showed up and gave Donald Trump a popular vote and an electoral landslide win, the likes of which, again, Republicans have not seen since the 1980s. Tip up your glasses. Thank all of you. I've said this for a while. I think we've been on the right side of so many issues for so long, Uh, whether it was covid whether it was the 2022 election, and a lot of times we didn't stack wins. This was a tremendous win. This was a earth-shattering, in many ways, win. MSNBC and CNN are still in shock over what the American public did. I'm not. I trust the innate goodness of the American people, and I also understood, as I saw Elon Musk, as I saw Tulsi Gabbard, as I saw Robert F. Kennedy Jr., All of them took the same path that I took. I was just a few years in front of them. In 2020, I voted Trump for the first time. I did not vote for him in 2016. In 2024, obviously, I endorsed, uh, I told you I was voting for Trump, wrote about it, all in on the Trump train. A lot of you joined me. And the reason why I was optimistic, and I kept saying, I think Trump's going to win Arizona, and he's going to win Nevada, and he's going to win Georgia, and he's going to win North Carolina, and he's going to win Florida by double digits. The reason why I was optimistic was because I was hearing from more and more people who didn't vote Trump in 2016, who didn't vote Trump in 2020, but they were fed up with everything they had seen, and they were voting Trump in 24. I wasn't hearing anybody who voted Trump in 16, who voted Trump in 20, and decided to flip to Kamala in 24. I think the end result here is going to be amazing to hear the behind the scenes, what actually took place in the Democrat Party. But I think the evidence that's going to come out is that Joe Biden didn't want to step down, that they forced him out, and that when these exit poll numbers get revealed, that Joe Biden might well have had a much better chance of maintaining the so-called blue wall, what I call the Big Ten states, Trump has now built his own wall in Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin for two of the last three elections, and that wall is a massively strong uh, Big Ten, to me, normal Midwestern values that carried Trump to the win. All right, I love all of you. You may be able to tell in my voice I don't have a lot left. I've been doing a ton of shows over the last 24 hours. I'm ecstatic. My last advice for all of you is if you were voting Trump, go out, celebrate, have a great meal, 
Take somebody you love out and just say thank you. We've been working super hard at OutKick, been working super hard at Clay and Buck. So many people behind the scenes. I am proud of all of you. This was a consequential, incredibly important win. Thank you for all the work you do. But if you're out there and you voted Kamala, or maybe you voted third party, I would encourage you to do your own research. Don't trust me just because I say it. If you find out that I am telling you things that are untrue, you should trust me less. That should be the law of the land for media. For everybody out there, the pollsters were wrong for a third straight time about Trump. When people are wrong, and when they get things wrong constantly, which the left-wing media has, there should be consequences for that. They should have smaller audiences. You should trust them less. Be aggressive. Expose your mind to a variety of perspectives. There's a reason I still read the New York Times, the Washington Post, and the Wall Street Journal every single day. It's because I want to make sure that I'm not missing any arguments at all. I do think if you spend time with us here at OutKick, what you will find is over time, you will come to trust us more because we're just saying, I haven't changed at all. The world went crazy. The woke mind virus took over a lot of people to the extent that they were willing to argue men were actually women and they deserved the right to win a championship. We planted our flag in the sand. OutKick is still the only place in America that is a sports media site that just has this crazy idea. Men should compete against men and women should compete against women. Overwhelmingly, American sports fans agree with us, which is why the single most powerful ad that Donald Trump ran was Kamala's for they, them, I'm for you. It was a hell of a message. Trump nailed it. The greatest political comeback of all time is in Donald Trump's favor now. What a night. What an experience. Let's go. I love all of you, even those of you with micro penises who voted for Kamala Harris. White dudes for Harris. There's even room for you on the OutKick train. DBAP, unless you need to SBAP. Hey, haters, I was right about everything. Wear it, losers. I'll see you guys tomorrow.